Hi everyone, I'm Pearl, Pearl Lopian EFT trainer. And I thought what a wonderful idea this Hanukkah, what a wonderful idea it would be to shine a light on some of the wonderful EFT practitioners that I've had the privilege to train. Uh, some people who I've known for a while, some people who I've never met. And what perfect person to start with, who could be better than our wonderful rabbit son, Fia Kimchi. Fia Kimchi is a CBT life coach and she incorporates EFT into her work. She's been, she's been a Rabbitson for how long? 35 years. And she's had a ton, a ton of experience. So much that she brings into her work. And I'm so excited to welcome her and ask her a few questions and hear her wonderful words of wisdom. What I want to start with is, what attracted you to do EFT in the first place? Hi, Pearl. I just want to say to everyone, um, before I start, as we know each other for a very, very long time from London, and um, it is really, it was very special to do the course with you because I really have benefited enormously. I think you're a very astute, intuitive, fantastic EFT trainer. Oh, wow. Now, if you're asking me, really, if you ask me what attracted me to EFT, nothing. I didn't even want to do it. <laughs> but you're my friend and you said, come on a course, come on a course. And I refused twice. And the third time, it was too embarrassing. Okay. I, th I went down the CBT route. I went down the ordinary coaching route, which is wonderful. Um, but um, okay, I decided, okay, I'll do a course with you. And honestly, after half the day, I was hooked. I saw how incredibly efficient this is and how very fast through the tapping, through the tapping like this with the words, the right words, we can access our deeper emotions what this is all about, and even change the emotions, uh, what CBT is all about. So it is a combination of CBT and tapping that I think works really, can work magic. Obviously nothing is for everyone and not every method works for everything. That's also important to notice, but Baruch Hashem, I feel that um, many times it is very, a very wonderful tool. So it's wonderful to hear. First of all, thank you for all those compliments. Wow, <laughs> thank you. And how you use it in your practice. So you actually use it within your practice together with CBT and life coaching. Is there yes. anything more you'd like to say about that? Um, yes, I, I usually start with, um, you know, the story where people are up to when they come to me. Um, and at a certain point, um, I feel I hit a very emotional point. And um, CBT is based on the idea that thoughts inform our emotion, as you well know. Um, but to come to that point, so it takes quite a few sessions to actually come to the deeper emotions and then to try and change those emotions into a positive emotion, the difficult negative emotion into a positive emotion. And with the CBT, I have found that the access is much quicker. It goes much faster. And people seem to be receptive because we, access the acupressure points, that is the whole point of um, EFT, um, their emotional brain is engaged much quicker and I can see a shift much quicker. I have found it particularly useful in trauma therapy, I must say, um, to change people's own character. Characteristics is a bit harder, honestly. Yes. The people, of course, must want to change and that is also working on one's midot and that is obviously much harder. But um, yes, I have found it very wonderful and very amazing. And people's um, deep sadness can often dissipate through the EFT, the combination, I would say, of the EFT and, and, and the coaching. But yes, that's what I have found. Yeah, it's, it's, very, very it's so rewarding to see the shift that people make, you know, when they come amazing. with such a problem, amazing. you think, and then yes. to see those shifts. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And what about what for Hanukkah? We'd love to have a Hanukkah message from you. Okay. Um, okay, so we're approaching Hanukkah. And Hanukkah, of course, is one of these wonderful and easy festivals, you know, no cleaning for paste, no building of sukkahs, no building of huts. You know, it, it's a light. I call it a light a festival and literally a light and a light festival, obviously. And it's a very, um, well, I hope that people find it also very for the community to bring together. And I'm so grateful that the Seger has been lifted here. The lockdown is not going to happen over Hanukkah. I thought that would be a real, 
that would be a hard one from everybody, but it's not going, so we can all get together within reason, with masks and whatever, social distancing, but still. Um, Hanukkah is about, of course, a few things. First of all, it is about the victory of um, the Maccabim, of a small group of people who were um, all those years ago, and they were up against an enormously mighty power who actually didn't want to destroy the Jews, but they wanted, it was an ideological battle. They wanted to destroy Judaism, Yiddishkeit, because they believed in the ultimate human uh, human wisdom as the ultimate value, rather than what we believe that mm -hmm. God is the giver of life and of wisdom. Okay, so that is one battle, and we're very grateful for that. The other thing is the light, the miracle of the light. And I think the light symbolizes something very special. Um, as you know, um, the light itself, a candle, symbolizes the human soul. And it is amazing that when we need good fuel, we need good um, physical, but also emotional and mental basis. But then when you spark a little, you, you hold a little candle to it, if you like, it lights by itself and it always wants to go up. It wants to go upwards, okay? So I have the feeling that the human soul always aspires to greater things and to better things and also to spread the light. The light inside, but also the light in the surroundings and the darkness outside for other people. And to add to this symbolism is the wonderful idea that every night we light another candle. Mm -hmm. First night one, yes. second night two, third night three, etc. So I think it is symbolic for our, our life here in this world that we should, there is a possibility, the potential of growing and finding more light in our life and spreading more light in our life. And I think that that is a very, um, very beautiful insight of Chazal, of our sages, to make it like that. Because it was a discussion, should you light eight candles in the beginning or eight candles in the end? And in the end, it was decided to do eight candles in the end because it is holy, holy or mosif. Our life should be, it's it symbolized like that. We should increase the light in our lives, our happiness and spread it out to the whole world. And that's the Hanukkah message for this year, I think, for me. That is beautiful, uh, that is beautiful. So Rebbe Kim Fia, my friends, I love sharing the knowledge of EFT with you. May we continue, may you continue to share your light and spread your light with lots of love to you. Thank you. And to everybody. Thank, thank, you. thank you, thank you for joining okay. me today. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye.